Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, June 23rd, and you know what that is for Wealth Wellness Wednesday with two sisters. My name is Janice, aka Wellness Diva 5.0, and we are waiting for the amazing Carol Serene, my sister, partner in crime, aka Nani Boss. She's going to be signing on in just a few minutes. She was traveling late last night and can't wait to join us. So I want to hop right into it and <laughs> appropriately so today is wealth wellness wednesday and we have an amazing certified environmental scientist health coach so i can't wait to dive into conversation with her but first angela thank you so much for being on with us today we are so excited to have you on i've been looking forward to this for a long time you guys had so much great energy i couldn't wait i was so excited to do this Wonderful. So th thank you for that, by the way. Um, I'm, I'm, I know that when we originally spoke, I'm also a health coach, obviously. Um, I attended the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. And what captured me when we initially chatted and I went over your bio and stuff was the Environmental Scientist Certified Health Coach. So I'm just, I want to just dive right on into that. How did you go from a scientist to a health coach? No, that's a good question. Um, basically, I went into environmental science like straight out of, well, honestly, what, so what year was it? It was the Exxon Valdez oil spill, what, in the early 90s? When was that? I'm embarrassed to say I don't know the exact year. I, I think it was the early 90s. Yeah. That really prompted me to want to study environmental science, seeing those like poor birds on the, you know, on the shoreline and people. And I really, I looked, I immediately went, you know, looking, it was about the time I was looking to go to college and, you know, didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. But I knew after seeing that, that I wanted to be a, you know, I wanted to help the environment. So I went to college, got my environmental, environmental resource management degree. And I immediately went into um, working and consulting in Florida. Yeah, I was an environmental consultant in Florida for, oh my gosh, 10 or 15 years. Yeah. And then I also worked in the uh, science arena for renewable energy companies. So doing a lot of like wind and solar permitting. And I absolutely loved it. There was like, it was a great job. It was perfect fit for me. You know, like some people go to school and don't do exactly what they went to school for, but I feel like I went to school and I studied this and that's exactly what I did, you know, in my job. So, and I enjoyed it, but then let's see, 20, 2010, my husband got, no, so it must have been 2011. So 2010, I had my first child and that always shifts everything, doesn't it? <laughs> like, I mean, yes, I was, <laughs> and I remember being in Florida and it was like, there's no maternity leave, you know, like I remember I was like, I want to stay home as long as I can with her. But I think I was like, I somehow squeaked out like four months, you know, like to be able to stay home and, um, and then back to work. And then a few months later, my husband was offered a job overseas in Switzerland. And so that's when I was like, what a great opportunity for me to stay home. And, you know, at the time we thought it'd be like a two or three year, you know, temporary assignment. We'd be back to our old life. And now here we are 10 years later, still in Switzerland. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. yeah we, and I had my second child here in Switzerland, like, you know, so that's a whole nother story if you want to get into it, the difference between like having one in the US and having one in Europe. But, but really what prompted me um, to go from environment, so basically I left my job, you know, as a consultant in Florida to come to Switzerland, raise my child, you know, raise our daughter, which was great, you know, gave me some time off. But then obviously we stayed longer and longer. <laughs> and what prompted me to go get my health coaching certification was really I call it for selfish reasons. I wanted to like be a healthy mom. And I also wanted to make sure my kids were raised as healthy as possible. I noticed when we moved overseas, like we were just, I felt like we were often getting sick, you know, like, I don't know. If, and I thought, oh, maybe because we weren't raised here, you know, like we're not, we don't have the immunities that we're like supposed to. Hello. <laughs> Welcome, Nani Boss. Good morning. I don't know there's a funny, strange, Blair, did you see that little blackness? Yes. I don't know what that is. It's got to be something to do with my camera. Hold on. 
Oh, and we are live. I didn't realize we were live. Well, you know, this, this is a crap all that happens when we are on. And I apologize for being late. I'm no black thing there. I'm not really sure what that is. It has something to do with the camera. Um, sadly, I got in later than expected. We had some delays with the weather last night. So here I am. Continue. Welcome. So Angela was filling us in. Um, she's a certified health coach, but she started out as an environmental scientist. So my first question to her was, okay, that obviously intrigued me. So how do you go from environmental yeah. coach to a certified health coach and yeah. starting a wellness business? And she's just getting into filling us in on the wellness aspect. Yeah. Um, so and she, you live in Switzerland, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I have an off-topic question. I just have to ask it, and this has sure. nothing to do with what we're talking about. No problem. How is the chocolate in Switzerland? It's amazing, but it will spoil you forever from eating <sighs> any other chocolate. Like, I cannot eat chocolate back in the U.S. anymore. It tastes like you, you will be spoiled forever. It is the best chocolate on earth. You know, um, what it, it, they don't put a lot of additives or like other fillers in. It's just pure goodness. It's lovely. And is it, are you a dark, dark chocolate or milk chocolate? I mean, I like all chocolate, but as you know, as we get older, I feel like dark chocolates, obviously I've learned as a health coach, it has more benefits. So I've learned to, yeah, you know, love the hot or the dark chocolate is yeah, a little more, but no, it's, it's amazing here. It really is. And it will like, it's just funny. Like whenever my husband or my family, we go back to the U.S., I'm always like stuff that I used to love there, you know, like even like the best bread in the U.S. I'm like, now I'm like, what's wrong with, I even, I remember asking my husband, what's wrong with this bread? And he's like, oh dear, you're just spoiled now because <laughs> you have like the best bread and the best chocolate and the best cheese. So yeah. Wow. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> Yeah. So bring us back to where we were just starting the conversation uh, yeah. about you getting into the wellness industry. Um, you mentioned something after you had your first, I'm sorry, your second child, correct? Yeah. yeah, I just felt like we were getting sick a lot, you know, like whether it's a cold or a flu or, I mean, I had, I actually had the flu twice once we moved over here, never have had the flu before in my life. And so I was like, and, you know, like if the kids are sick, it ruins a holiday or, you know, you get on a plane with a sick child. That is not a fun thing at all. So so I, it was one of those like I call it like basically putting my science cap back on. Like I want to get to the root cause of this. Like there's got to be something, you know, to help us. So that's really I went back, got my health coaching certification for selfish reasons to take care of myself and my family. But as you know, what you learn there just whoo, blows your mind, you know, like it it turns all those, those myths, like what you're brought up with knowing what's healthy and what's not healthy. And basically when I came out of it, I just noticed the other tired moms that were getting sick a lot, you know, like, I, you know, friends and I'd share information with them and really it grew, the business grew organically from there, helping other moms deal with, you know, sickness or having more energy levels, having more, you know, better nutrition, those kind of things. And it's grown over the years. I mean, I was really helping like tired moms back, you know, I'd say five or six years ago, but now we've kind of transitioned into, I've transitioned into midlife moms because I noticed that we're all kind of suffering the same thing as well. Like the hormones are changing and you have this kind of laundry list of symptoms that go along with that, that people, nobody's talking about, you know? And so everyone feels like, oh my gosh, I'm, you know, what's wrong with me? And they keep it quiet when really like we need to talk about it, we need to talk about, you know, that there's things we can do to help, you know, prevent some of the symptoms or help prevent this, what happens after. No one told me that like menopause causes, you're more prone to like aging diseases until I started doing research. And you're like, oh, I didn't know that, that these, all these things happen after, you know, menopause. So, but there's things we can do, you know, to help prevent that. And that's kind of where my business has evolved into, yeah, the midlife, yeah, women helping them. So, yeah. I think that's amazing. And Carol, so uh, as we know, um, in, in being in a respectable age bracket, you know, obviously gut health is very important. We always talk about that. Um, 
but sometimes we don't really take into account where we are in our journey. So I just want to turn it over to Carol Sue because I know she has a lot of great questions or comments that she would like to um, share with you. Absolutely. You know, we, and thanks, Jan, we, we and, and thank you as well, Angela, for, you know, bringing that to the forefront because it's kind of like one of those taboo subjects for women. They, they think of, you know, now I'm going to be kind of sharing where I'm at. I'm sharing my age. And, you know, that notion that, you know, age number one defines us because it certainly does not. Uh, but health and wellness define all of us, no matter what age we are. So I always talk about healthy at any age. Yeah. And for me personally, uh, all the research I've done and the many different things that I've tried, whether it be diet, which, you know, we're not firm believers in diet in the sense of dieting for a fat purpose or for an event, but rather just eating healthier okay. when you can, but not depriving yourself. So it's a kind of a happy balance, but also the importance of the gut, because for me, the gut is the second brain of our bodies. It, you know, if, if we're not getting that proper nourishment in there, which scientifically we cannot get from food, uh, food alone, right. that is what is feeding all our different uh, systems within our body, including our cannabinoid system. So it really is a interesting topic when you reach a certain age and the stigma that comes with talking about age you know so for me it's like get that mindset out of your brain so what as you are sharing and educating your clients and customers what are some of the key pieces or outline that you have found uh, resonate with them but also that you can really see kind of that light bulb moment going off with your clients and customers I think for a lot of women, I mean, we can, like, I think we all know we're supposed to be eating better, right? <laughs> and exercising. That's just, you know, but I think there's a lot of misconception as well that, oh my God, now I'm in midlife. So I'm gaining a little bit of weight. Now I need to cut calories and, and really ramp up my exercise when that's probably the worst thing you can do. You know, like I'm a big advocate for eating more healthier foods, you know, not less, because when you're starving, as you guys know, when you're starving your body, it's, it causes stress in your body and your body. I always like to equate things like back to the caveman days, you know, like, so you're running from a saber tooth tiger, you know, or something, and your body's going to hold on to that fat and all the, you know, stuff it needs. Cause it's thinking, Oh my God, she's in trouble, you know? And so I have so many women who come to me, they're like, my God, I've been dieting forever. And I've been hitting the gym an hour a day and I'm not losing any weight. And I was like, that's exactly <laughs> the problem is you need to eat more, just adjust what you're eating. And then your exercise really shouldn't be stressful, you know, like, and I think that's the biggest thing, especially as we get into midlife is having that conversation about how much stress we put on our bodies, you know, whether it is dieting or exercising or lack of sleep or job or career or family or you name it, you know, we all as women have this burden of, you know, excess cortisol in our bodies that, that cause so, you know, we don't realize it because it's not so obvious, you know, when, when we're stressed all day long, but when we can't wind down at the end of the day or, you know, so in a nutshell, it's kind of this holistic approach to, yeah, you know, going in going inside and looking at how can I adjust, you know, make little adjustments so that I'm getting a good night's sleep or, you know, like exercise doesn't have to be hitting the gym for an hour at a time, you know, a day. It's honestly, like, I didn't realize till again, started doing research. We need a lot more strength training more than we do the like high intensity workout because it's good for our bones as we age and good for our metabolism. I mean, it's, got multiple benefits. So yeah, that's kind of, I mean, I always say like, eat better, not less, you know, um, just, you know, making some healthy adjustments and then dealing with some of the, you know, the stress that, and, and I, I, I never say you can eliminate stress. I don't think that's possible. Kind of like you can't eat a perfect, you know, eat perfectly all the time, but yeah, just learning to handle stress better and learning to deal with some of the anxiety and those kind of things are all, yeah, some of the things we talk about, yeah. Right, and I love the fact that, you know, well, we're talking about fitness and exercise, you know, one of the things that, you know, I'm finding with chatting with, uh, you know, customers and clients is just letting them know 
that finding activities that are going to provide fitness that are actually fun, Absolutely. you know, have fun with. So, you know, that's why we're really working towards incorporating a land and water challenge because the point being is we're in the summertime months for, for, for those that are, are, you know, you know, different aspects of the world, but in the United States for sure. Mm -hmm. And why not incorporate fun activity that you can incorporate that you can do the same type of exercise whether you're land and or in water but it's fun who doesn't enjoy swimming around and you know finding that enjoyment you know how many times do you have a you know a bunch of girlfriends over friends over family over and you're just chatting in the pool well you can get movement while you're doing that so you're you know catching up you're having fun you're having that enjoyment with that, those relationships and getting some fitness in between and, and, and other activities, just, you know, whether you like to power walk, you know, you know, some people prefer to power walk alone. They want to get like in tune with nature. That's great because that's also helping your mindset as well. Absolutely. Or something that's an activity, a sport that you enjoy is also going to add to that encouragement and excitement and enjoyment. But at the same time, you're doing good for your body. Yeah, it's funny. Like I, I, I talked about this with my clients as well. Like one of the things that I enjoyed during COVID when we were kind of, I mean, we were on a very soft lockdown, but my kids do just dance on the Nintendo. Oh my God, I had so much fun burning calories with them. And that was my, and it really brought up the point of like, I talked to my clients, exercise should not be punishment. You should not look at it like, oh, I ate a donut today. I got to go work out at the gym for an hour. It should really be something you look forward to doing and celebrating the fact that you can move your body and what your body can do and has been able to do it should i think it's when we, it's that whole mindset thing like when we look at food as like good or bad or we look at exercise as you know punishment it really sends the wrong signals to our body that we're you know we're not worthy of you know having this or having that and we really just need to like you said cut all that crap out and <laughs> you know just focus on eating a little better and like you said absolutely enjoying what you you know, movement for lack of, yeah. You know. uh, we love movement here at Two Sisters. And as a lot of people know, um, I would obviously say that I'm more of a gym rat, but Carol Sue also has a very compress compressive, or I forgot to get the word I'm trying to use here, but a very comprehensive, took me a while to get there, <laughs> um, workout regimen herself. But, you know, mindset is the key and you know in my early 40s when i initially started my journey i didn't know that i would have such an appreciation just for the movement aspect and where that has taken me you know my love for kickboxing rowing whatever it may be so i'm anxious to find out when you're working with your clients and maybe they ask you you know geez, Angela, I've never been on, you know, I don't know what to do. Like, how do you coach them through that aspect of having them look at exercising or movement as, you know, joy for your body versus a punishment? Yeah. I mean, it, it starts there. It starts with the, you know, it starts with the conversation, but I also, I believe when I work with my clients, we, I have to meet them where they are. Some of them are like, yes, I'm ready to, you know, go all in and, you know, have a really thorough exercise routine or, you know, and some of them are like, they just need to get off the couch and go for a 10 minute walk. So it really, you know, so we, I try and not make, like you said, not make a big deal about it, but make it so exactly where they're at. Okay. So if they're already hitting 10,000 steps, but maybe their cardio is not up, you know, then we just add a little cardio or add a little strength training at the end. So it really depends on, like I said, like their level of fitness, but I, I'm one, and I know everybody's not the same. I'm one, I like facts, you know, I like the, you know, the research. So when you tell someone that, okay, if you do a little bit of strength training, it's going to help your physique physically, but it's also going to help boost your metabolism it's probably going to help you sleep better you know and, and at the end of the day and it's probably going to help with that mental fit I mean it has so many benefits and so trying to see the benefits of it hopefully encourages them to you know make that little extra effort they need to yeah to get out and do stuff so um, and, I, and I think yeah. the other key pieces too especially when we're talking about lifting weights as you age 
the, those that are into bodybuilding, of course, yes, you're going to pump a little bit more iron. We know that. We have a lot. I, I know a lot of people in their 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s that are still bodybuilders, believe it or not. And they love it. That, that That's their passion. And I applaud them. But for the most piece to it, it's really about lighter weights yes. and more reps. Yeah. Uh, that is also going to help prevent injury because there's some things from a a standpoint of where our bodies age that while we can add to and try to ensure the best we can to keep our bones and muscles safe yeah. there's that age factor that you have to embrace and say you know what i can't i can't pump 120 pounds anymore no, no, no. i gotta go down to maybe five sets of 20. Um, you know you adapt to wherever your body meets yeah. that challenge of the weight and understand that you're still getting a great workout. One of the other things that uh, I really encourage is the bands because elasticity and strength training and constantly stretching those muscles. Um, we're talking now in that next stage of longevity now, yes. you know, keeping the body as healthy for as long as we can because that is going to help the aging process. Oh, yeah. No, and it's so true because it's not about living longer. It's about being healthy and enjoying those, you know, this next chapter of our lives. So absolutely. The resistance training is so great. Yes. And that's why things like yoga and Pilates are really great during, right. you know, as we get older. Um, I mean, but again, it's like you said, just finding something that you enjoy doing, whatever it is, dancing, swimming, biking, you know, and just being able to look forward to it, not, you know, think, Oh God, I got to go. Exercise. It's not a chore. It's yeah. not it shouldn't be a chore yeah. to make sure that you're healthy. It shouldn't yeah. be. It's something that we have to do. Okay. So if we have to do it and we have the choice to actually do something that's going to bring us, you know, release those endorphins and give us that good feeling. Wow. That's kind of the best of both words. We get to choose yeah. and we're all different. We all look different. Our insides are different and what brings us joy is different. So find whatever fits that piece that's going to bring you that happiness yeah and i i try like i i tend to steer my clients towards um like a couple of youtube you know channels and you know ways to find you know and i'm just saying experiment find things you like you know that maybe it's not yoga maybe it's you know more of the oh. yeah whatever it is so yeah i try and encourage them to you know find what they like to do because that's so important Right. And I, you know, for me, I obviously love strength training as well. Um, but I had a very interesting conversation with a very spicy four and a half year old this past <laughs> weekend, who notably pointed out to me that great auntie, you go, well, what's this? And, and like, I am like working it and working it. And I'm like, Hey, I said, wait to year 59, but it's so funny. Um, squishy. Yeah. Squishy. She calls it squishy. Yeah. And I said, hey, you know, we were kind of teasing her back. This, you know, this is squishy. What's going on with your arm? She's, oh, no, that's not squishy. That's squishy. <laughs> but, you know, out of the mouths of babes. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, the, and my grandniece and grandnephew, um, they just got a pool. So they're always in the pool. Like they, they understand that concept, you know, and even Ray Ray said, you need to do some weights, just saying. She pulled me aside because she didn't want everybody to hear that. You need to do more weights. Too funny, like yeah. out of the mouth of babe. So Ray Ray, if you happen to listen to this, <laughs> he's doing more weights. And that's, I mean, the thing about, the great thing about weights and just like, like you said, Carol, there, I mean, you don't need them. You don't need to be lifting heavy weights. It, mm -hmm. You'll see, a, you'll see a difference pretty within a few weeks, you know, even a, a week or two, like it's amazing the definition you can get, you know, pretty, pretty quickly. So. And if you don't have weights, you know, there's, there's, there's other avenues that you can use. A lot of, some people use water jugs. Yes. You know, it doesn't have to be a gallon, make it a half gallon. So you want to make sure that it's doing something that you're able to do. Still push yourself when you get a little bit, okay, this is getting easier. Use the edge of a desk, the edge of a counter, do some pull-ups, push-ups. There's, there's many things that you can incorporate that you don't have to go out and buy expensive weights. Yeah. <laughs> the good old five pounder, because you can do so much. And if you feel like you're getting um, kind of used to that, you can always do two on one hand, but you can also actually increase your reps. So if you're going with 
10 sets of 20, well, guess what? Go to 25 and 30, and you're going to see that resistance. You're going to feel like, whoa, I am getting that workout. So you always want to push yourself. You don't want to get into it. You don't want to always stay comfortable. You want to push yourself. Oh, but also be mindful of, you know, where your body is at from a, uh, you know, physical standpoint than what you can withstand. It's funny you should say that because when we, you know, last year when we first went, we went into like a two month lockdown, you know, and back in March last year. And um, you couldn't get weights online. I was like trying to find some and it was like impossible to get them shipped to the house. And I was doing exactly what you're saying. I was just finding like the heavy bottles of water, or, you know, jugs of wine or whatever it was. <laughs> and I was like, wine is always good. Just don't try yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it. Wine abuse. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, and speaking of YouTube, uh, one person that I follow on YouTube has, um, speaking of the, the squishy Ray Ray, um, there's one trainer, her name is Tracy Campbell, Campoli, and she does an upper body workout and it's C-A-M-P-O-L-I and it's called Bat Wings, about eight, nine minutes. Now I consider myself to be physically fit pretty much and you know able to handle anything yeah. every time I've done this workout it kicks my butt yeah I mean and yeah, you could start is. out just by using not using any weights but the first before I had weights I was using um the family size soup which was when you're doing oh, this yeah and you're like oh my god That's it's awesome. definitely a, a very intense but doable workout. Yeah, no, that's a great, that's, I'll put that on the rotation of, yeah. For, yeah, I go to, we just got permission to go back to like exercise classes here and I do a bar class, you know, on okay. like Fridays. I love that. It is the perfect amount of soreness the next day. You know, it's not like you're, oh my God, I can't walk, but it's like, oh, I felt like I did, you know, like had a good right. workout. Cause but it's kind of like you're saying, we use resistance training, you know, we use the bar, we use some small weights. It's just a mixture. I like, and that's what I like. I love the variety of it, but I, it was funny walking into the class. Cause I was like, wow, I really missed the group setting, you know, of like being with other people. It was kind of emotional. Like, you know, I, I, I just don't feel like I do it justice at home by myself or as much as I like getting my cardio up with my kids, you know, I missed that. Like, Group Com camaraderie with, yeah, with, with no, it was lovely. Individuals that are really working towards and yeah. locking those arms of those that are working towards those same goals. So that's awesome. Yeah, I yeah, love it. One of the other questions that I would love to ask you, um, I know that you do one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching as well as group coaching, and you have something very key in your bio about seasonal health coaching, yep. and expat living so if you can maybe first describe what expat living is and then we'll chat about the um, yeah. seasonal health coaching it's funny because there's definitely a network i mean if you're an expat you kind of gravitate towards other expats because there's that community feeling and you know you i say expat living as part of my health coaching because some people especially like here in in Europe, you, you might be from a whole nother continent and kind of have to get used to what's available here. Like it was so surprising to me to come into the grocery store and know that you can't get canned pumpkin. You can only get pumpkin in like se September and October. And I was like, I am a huge pumpkin fan. So it was like, I started hoarding, you know, the pumpkins around that time of year and freezing, you know, I cut them and freeze them, but it, it's more just how do you adapt to the lifestyle, to the food choices to the, you know, to the, even the nuances of living in a country that you don't, might not speak the language. So it's more of a camaraderie and community feel um, for the expat, yeah, lifestyle, just to know how to navigate even just social issues as well as, you know, nutritional needs and lifestyle, yeah. So obviously that's seasoned in with your seasonal yeah, yeah. health coaching and seasonal meal, meal plan, planning. Yeah. Um, do you do any cooking for your um, clients? It's funny. I, it's funny you should say that because like I'm doing a program this month called Midlife Metabolism and it's just a 30 day kind of, you know, reset. And I asked, I had, I, I like collaborating with other experts. And as much as I would love to do cooking demonstrations, my kitchen is tiny. 
like it's embarrassingly small. It's, but I'm quite proud of how well I've managed to, you know, we cook many meals a day and healthy meals, but I couldn't figure out how to do, like I'll do something simple like a chia pudding or, you know, something that's really easy, but if it's too, you know, too much, it's really hard. So anyway, for this, for my 30 day program, I collaborated with, a. she's called a home cook. Like she, that's her, oh my God. I'm forgetting her title, but she's doing the cooking demonstrations basically. So I'm giving her the meal plans and she'll pick one or two a week and do the demonstration because she has a much nicer kitchen than I do. So yeah, I haven't been doing that much cooking. I love sharing recipes and especially again, going back to kind of what you're saying about the expat, I have to, even though I have clients here in Europe, I also have clients in the US as well that we work together virtually, but I kind of have to adjust my recipes because like here in Europe, like we can't get nutritional yeast. You know, that's just not a common thing at the stores. There's lots of things that we just don't, you know, that you see on lots of healthy recipes that you don't get here. I mean, you could order it, but I mean, it would take a while to get here. So yeah, I, I kind of have to do two meal plans when I do my programs, one for the US and one for Europe, <laughs> which is funny. Wow. Yeah, that is funny. Okay. That is so interesting. And the other thing, and I'm just going through this, so I, I, excuse me for looking over to my other side here. Um, and you said that you've been in Switzerland for about 10 years now? No, I can't believe it. 10 years as of, yeah, this November, yeah, or October, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. What is your, and this is more of a curiosity question. It's fine. What is your favorite thing about living in Switzerland? It is unfreaking believably beautiful. Like even it's insanely gorgeous. Even just driving to like, and, and that's the other thing. Like my husband, and I joke, my husband's also American. Like we're, you know, and he, I remember he would spend an hour one way. So two hours a day driving to work, you know? And like now we can go a week or two without getting in our car because like we can, everything's very low, you know, local but when we do get in the car because as a family we love hiking we love going to the mountains or going to the lake we are still in awe of just a drive an hour drive is breathtaking like it's just I, I know it sounds crazy but it is it is beautiful like it's just beautiful place the mountains you have mountains you have these gorgeous crystal clear lakes um you have waterfalls like all you know everywhere you turn and my town, like we live in the northern part, the German speaking, it, we're, we're probably an hour or more from the mountains, what you would think is like the beautiful Swiss Alps, but it's easy to get there. It's not a big deal. But where we live, there's like a castle up on the hill. And that's like, talk about great exercise. Like that's my exercise routine to climb up to that castle, you know, walk around a few times and climb back, you know, walk back down. So we still pinch ourselves even after 10 years you know that it's just a gorgeous place so yeah that's wow. <laughs> that's amazing carol yeah. sue any uh final thoughts questions no well let's find out where we can get a hold of angela let our viewers and uh listeners know is that me oh yes. you, can, yes, you can find me uh, my website is warm wellness so warm is my last name and um i'm also yeah on facebook instagram angela at Angela Warm Wellness. And um, I have a Facebook group called Happy Healthy Midlife Mavens. So all talking, you know, that community support of getting us through midlife and navigating that that special time of our lives. <laughs> That's right. And it is a special time of our lives. You know, I, I often say, you know, a lot of people sadly will get into that mentality of, oh, I wish I was 20 years younger, 30 years younger. And I would say embrace where you're at. You know, the journey brought you here for a reason that you, you're looking you're, you're, the lens that you're looking through now is much different than the lens you were looking at in your 20s and 30s and probably 20s and 30s and 40s, you probably really weren't looking. Yeah, anyway. yeah. it's so true. Well, on that note, we want to thank you today, Angela, for sharing your time with us. Um, it's 8, 8, well, now it's about 8.35 a.m. in the morning, so I believe it's about 2.30 yep. or so in switzerland yeah yeah, yeah we're and i am dying for some dark chocolate just saying all right well send me your address i'll send you well no it'll probably melt that's a problem like yeah right in the winter time i'll send you some or well, thank you i'm coming to the states next month so i'm gonna bring you some oh really where are you visiting if you don't mind us asking 
Florida. Our family's from Florida and we haven't been in two years. Like our kids have not seen their grandparents for two years. It's so wow. we got Florida. our first yeah. Whereabouts in Florida. Um my my husband and I both grew up in like in the Orlando area. So yes. and then my parents live up close to Gainesville. So okay. yeah, we go back and forth, but Vero like, Beach here. I can meet yeah. you. <laughs> well, you know, after my husband and I got married, we lived down in Jupiter, Florida. I don't know if you Yes, that's not far from us, right? Yeah. I love that area. Love that's a pretty area. area. Yeah, we're not too far from there. So yeah. yeah. That's awesome. awesome. Wonderful. So again, thank you so much for being with us today. And, you know, on Wealth Wellness Wednesday, there's so much to always cover. And it's been our honor to have you on. So thank you. And we hope that you would definitely consider um, joining us again. Oh, my very gosh. soon. I'm going to turn it over to Carol soon. My name is Janice, aka Wellness Diva 5.0. It's beautiful today in North Haven, Connecticut. And I'm with two Yes, uh, so this is Carol Sue, a.k.a. Naughty Boss, live back in Vero Beach. Late night travel last night. We had to go through some storms, but guess what? We were here. It's a little cloudy, and I don't care. I'm seeing flowers. I'm seeing palm trees. I'm in my happy place. You guys remember what Wealth Wellness Wednesday is all about. It is understanding and embracing that you can have a healthy relationship with money as an entrepreneur, you understand that concept that with more money means you can impact more, impact your community more, help others in need more. Today's a day to share a little of that wealth. It's not about the dollar amount. It's not about the monetary amount whatsoever. Go up to an unsuspecting person, put it in a diaper bag, put it, if you're a pet person, put it in a pet food bag. Just go out and surprise somebody, change their way of looking at wealth and wellness. You guys have a great day. We will see you tomorrow for Trending Thursday. There's a lot trending. I'm already trending in my brain. We will so thankful so much to have you on, Angela. We'll see everyone tomorrow. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Have a great day.